this out. Put the camera in the in the garage, and hopefully that'll keep it from the wind. Um, so, if you're thinking of getting one of those, the first thing you really need to consider is the size of it. It is nine feet tall. It's just a it's a hair over nine feet tall. Without those uh, lights on top, it would be a hair over eight feet tall. Um, with the mirrors in, it is nine feet wide with the mirrors out and adjusted it is 11 feet wide and it is something like 25 feet long so it is a big vehicle and so you need to think of a place to store it so you're thinking you've definitely got room for one you're definitely going to get one but you're just thinking about the type do i want an m35 which is what I have with the gasoline engine. Do you want an M35A1, which has an early multi-fuel engine? Or do you want an A2, which has the later multi-fuel engine? Do you want uh, an A3, which has a diesel engine and an automatic transmission? Um, or do you, and um, with all of those, do you want the uh, C variant, for instance, M35A2C uh, has the bed sides that fold down, so you can make it into a flatbed if you wanted to, instead of the uh, cargo bed that I have here. Or do you want the M36, so you can get an M36 or an M36A2, that has just a longer wheelbase, so it's even longer. It just has a longer bed. Instead of having a 12-foot bed, it has somewhere around a 20-foot bed, I think. I don't remember exactly. Um, so there's that. Or do you want uh, one of the many other variants, like a tanker truck or a box truck or uh, an, like a semi-truck? Or do you want one of the 5-ton uh, models? the M923, um, and I forget the other um, five ton model numbers, but one thing I would suggest is think about your, own, well, number one, price, uh, your own abilities, and what you actually want to do with the, uh, with the thing. So an M35 is a cool piece of history um, because it's that early version, it's got the gasoline model. So if you're looking for something to do uh, parades and car shows in, which is mostly what I do with this, then an M35 might be a good idea. You can paint it up in the um, olive green, put all the historic uh, lettering in it, and it's a nice piece of history. Um, other reasons to think of the M35, it's a gasoline engine, so if you are not familiar with diesel engines or maybe you are familiar with diesel engines and you just can't work on them um, perhaps the uh, gasoline um, version might be better however some problems with the M35 um, the gasoline version well the gasoline engine is actually extremely reliable but they're because it's not as common they can actually get more and they're older they can get more expensive and um, not many people are, are around that know how to, that necessarily worked on these when they were new and when they were in the military. And it's a little bit harder to find parts and information on the gas-powered ones because there's just not as many of them, um, not as many of them still around. Like I said, everyone and their brother has an M35A2. And that's the thing that they trained to work on in the military. Any of your, uh, any friends who are mili who were military mechanics, that's what they worked on. They didn't really work on the gasoline ones much. But it is fairly straightforward. So if you have experience with uh, any other gasoline vehicles, then it um, works out. It's no more maintenance than... Um, than what I do with uh, my Toyota or even my lawnmower. It's not more maintenance, it's just some different kinds of maintenance. For instance, air filters, like I said, instead of changing air filter, 
you just clean out the oil and stuff from the bottom of the air filter pan and changing the oil is the same except you have more oil and a different weird filter so yeah rotating the tires is quite a chore um, I did that took me about an hour per tire yeah so and it's a little bit different because it has drum brakes instead of disc brakes so the maintenance there is a little bit odd and then you have to remember every time you drive to drain your air tanks that way you don't get a bunch of gunk built up in there um, so it's not necessarily more maintenance it's just different maintenance the cool thing is like a lawnmower you don't have to deal with a bunch of annoying computer systems and unplug a bunch of wires and take off a bunch of plastic before you actually get to the thing that you want to work on um so that's nice if you have experience with diesel engines the m35 a2 might be the way to go also if you're looking for something to just uh bomb around in you don't you aren't worried about uh, going to car shows and stuff and if you're actually putting it to work the M35 A2 might be better for you especially if you're putting on a lot of miles and if you know how to work on them already because the M35 A2 is basically it's just a diesel engine that has some modifications that allow it to accept liquid accept other fuels um, so there's that. that. That's a plus if you already know diesel engines, know how to work on them. Also, they are generally cheaper because they're not any, they aren't rare, they don't have a lot of historical significance. So you can generally get them cheaper. Um, the parts and stuff are more available, parts, knowledge, because there are still a lot of people alive that used and worked on M35A2s in the military. I mean, they didn't even start uh, they didn't even start rebuilding them into M35A3s until the 90s. So there's plenty of people around that worked on the old M35A2s. Uh, so also it can run on a wide variety of fuels. So it can run on a whole bunch of stuff that you can uh, put in there. Um, so that's good if you have a selection of fuels available where prices may differ. Um, you can run it on that. This is actually, it actually gets expensive to run because I use uh, premium fuel because that's the only way that I can get fuel that is ethanol free. Um, ethanol tends to rot some of the rubber fuel lines and um, components in this. So um, I use ethanol free uh, fuel and the only way I can get that is to buy the uh, premium stuff. So running this can get quite expensive but um so you just have to think about your goals and what's available um the m35 a3s they have actually bigger tires they're probably slightly better off road as far as i am aware um i haven't actually driven an m35 a2 or an m35 a3 and i have barely driven this thing off road um, but I actually have driven it more off-road than I've driven my Toyota. Um, I mean, I drive this thing through the fields. I drive my uh, Toyota Matrix through the fields. and But this thing I've actually taken on some uh, trails uh, some through some um, situations that I definitely would not take my uh, Matrix through. So, um, but anyway it's supposed to be better off-road because it's got the new axles and different gearing um, if you can't drive a manual and then maybe the automatic transmission would uh, help you um, especially if you're doing a lot of driving because these uh those transmissions in these can get a little annoying when you're doing a lot of like city driving um, but yeah I think that's about all I want to say. So I have, in the past couple of weeks, changed the oil, checked the transmission, um, checked the gear oil in the transmission. I have rotated all the tires. Um, I have not cleaned out the air filter. Um, 
I might look at the oil in the air filter because I did clean that out uh, last year or the year before, but I haven't driven the truck much, so it hasn't sucked a lot of air through the air filter, but I might check that anyway because it has been sitting for quite a while. Um, I'm also hoping to check the differentials, uh, check the fluid in the differentials today. Um, I've also greased it all up, all of the uh, grease fittings on there, checked all the tire pressures and filled them up, and um, I did have to replace a windshield. Um, one of the windscreens, one of the windshields it cracked so what I did was I took the windshield out frame and all took it to the glass repair shop they took off the frame put in a piece of laminated you know quarter inch or half inch or whatever size into the frame glued it all back up and it looks pretty good um, so I got that done so I think the last goal I have for this truck for right now at some point, I would like to uh, check on the brakes on that front pass, the, for the front driver side, the tire seemed to not want to turn when I was changing the tires, it didn't want to rotate, and so I want to check the brake pad to see if that's running or if it needs to be readjusted or something, but that might have to wait because I am not really familiar with brakes so I might have to ask someone who knows a little bit about brakes um, that's the big thing is so I YouTube is where I learned to fix a lot of this stuff it's either just you know YouTube watching YouTube tutorials on how to do a lot of this stuff or it's just kind of a general sense of I know how this is supposed to work and I know how it's going right now and so I can kind of figure out how to make it do what it's supposed to. Um, just kind of the logic of it. That, that's how I tend to fix things. Um, so being able to know your mechanical limits and um, be knowing when to stop before you actually break something so